I've been painting professionally for a long time and there have been a couple of things that I've learnt that have transformed my paintings and given them a realism and a dimension that I hadn't been able to achieve and that I use to this day. And it is such a simple idea. I'm going to share it with you right now. Hi, I'm Mark Waller and this is the sort of stuff that I like to do. And this is what our channel is all about actually, painting this sort of stuff and looking at the world and finding magic. Have you ever wondered why we're compelled to paint nature and to try and recreate some of the, the magic that we see in the world? So I reckon that when we sit and we really look at nature really closely, we start to see how connected everything is. And we start to see that we're part of something much, much, much bigger. And how does that relate to our painting? I think when we paint things, we create the illusion of distance and space, that kind of takes us out of our world for a little while and, and gives us access to that magic. So one of the things that I discovered that cr helps create that kind of feeling of spaciousness is a thing called uh, atmospheric perspective. But what I'm going to do is share with you a really simple take on atmospheric perspective that's probably more practical than theoretical and I've found has been so useful for all of the years I've been painting. So I, I paint a lot of seascape stuff and I've got this whale here for a reason because painting underwater stuff was kind of what gave me this idea about creating the illusion of distance and atmospheric perspective in a really simple way. And I noticed when I was looking at a reference picture there were some whales. One was nice and close and one was a little bit further away and the one that was further away was a little less distinct and a lot bluer. And it wasn't really difficult for me to understand that there was clearly more water between this whale and that whale. Once I'd established that idea, I started looking at the rest of the world. And I realized that the trees in the distance have more air between them than the ones closer. And so that air has stuff in it and it affects the color of the object that I'm looking at in the distance. So it wasn't hard for me to work out that I had to create the illusion of distance by adding more air color. Now the hard part is working out what the right color is to use. And this is where I've used a little simple formula to help out with that. So to go back to the whale picture for a second, I've used fundamentally phthalo blue and burnt umber um, as the primary whale color. And the reason I've used phthalo blue primarily is because most of the background of this whale is phthalo blue. And so the phthalo blue will affect the color of the whale. So the further away parts of the whale are, the more phthalo blue I'm gonna use. Up here where the whale's close, less phthalo blue, but as I get further back here or further in here, more phthalo blue, and that creates the illusion of water in the distance. Pretty straightforward. The real trick is when we start doing it with landscapes. So we apply the same principle to a landscape. A tree in the distance is going to be affected more by the air color than the tree close to you. So how do we work out what color to paint that tree? So what I do is I look at the tree close to me, work out what color that is, and then add sky color. Which part of the sky? Because the tree is close to the horizon, I'll use the sky color that's close to the horizon. Nice and simple. If you stay, keep the color that's closest to the tree and add that to the tree, can't go wrong. Becomes really, really interesting though, when you get sunsets, for example, or you get uh, a late afternoon and you get these lovely pinks and purples. Same thing applies. You just use the pinks and the purples and add them to the color of the tree. You establish the color of the tree close to you first and then add that sky color further away. Nice and simple. So in my vlog coral, war, coral reef underneath, I should say, um, you can see that the bommies in front are quite crisp and clear. But as I move further away and create those lumps of coral further away, I gradually add more and more water color to create the impression of them being further away. It's nice and simple. So I've got a lovely little simple uh, vlog landscape with lake. And that also shows the same thing, just different colors, different time of day. But it again has a, a stronger, more robust color in the foreground. And I've gradually added sky color to create the illusion of hills receding back off into the distance. Again, nice and simple, but it can be much more sophisticated as well. 
And just to give you a bit more information, uh, in my recipe book, there's a little bit about creating hills in the distance. And again, it uses exactly the same principle, establish the color of the trees in the foreground and gradually add more sky color to create the illusion of trees receding off into the distance. Now, for something a little bit more sophisticated, with this picture here, with the pandanus trees and that beautiful sunlight, I've used exactly the same principle, but it's probably a little more complicated in that I've added the sky color or that really strong color, the predominant color that's in the clouds, and I've added it to the pandanus tree. And to the hills over in the far distance, I've added a little bit more blue because those hills are further away and there's a little more blue in the sky there. So I've added blue to those hills. And you can see actually in the waves as well, I've created the impression of distance in the waves by adding that wispy kind of sky color and putting a little wash over the top of those waves in the distance to create the impression of them being further away. If you have, want to have a little bit of fun with this, get some cellophane, some orange or red or blue if you like, and cut it up into three uh, strips and then look at an object and each time just add another piece of cellophane and you'll notice that the more cellophane you add or put between you and the object, the more the object will be altered by the color of the cellophane. And that's pretty much what happens in the world. It's, it's, the sky is no different. It's a really fun and simple way of understanding how that principle works. But what I want you to do is now go out into the world and actually look for that happening and see how the color relates to the sky behind it. And you'll be surprised what will um, open up and you'll be surprised just how sophisticated that understanding is and how much it'll change your paintings. I just want to say uh, welcome to our new members and thank you to all of our members for all of your support. Thank you.